Now we just said, why after all are we trying to discuss those logics that we discussed in the last video in a subject called mathematics, right? Now you may have a formula with you, say, say like this, say 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to n. So it becomes the sum of first n natural numbers and someone says this is equal to so much, right? Okay, or maybe after doing some calculation you have come to this and you need to verify. So, so, so given this, this we need to verify verify <coughs> if it is true if it is true correct did we get that this is the motivation this is why we are trying to trying to go for this now what is the way out for you that you put n is equal to 1 right so so maybe one of the logics is that um, uh, we check we check for n is equal to 1 both the sides so so you put n, n is equal to 1 that means it starts from 1 okay and it ends there n is the last number 1 is the last number and 1 is the first number as well so 1 and you and you put a 1 here so if I put a 1 here it is 1 into into 1 plus 1 that is 2 divided by 2 which is equal to 1 so 1 is equal to 1 that holds good so fine for n is equal to 1 it is okay now what do I do I go for n is equal to 2 okay now if n is equal to 2 the LHS becomes 1 plus 2 which is equal to 3 the RHS becomes 2 into 3 by 2 is that 3 yeah so it is true for n is equal to 2 it was true for n is equal to 1 what do I do n is equal to 3 okay so so I put 1 plus 2 plus 3 this is 6 how about this 3 into 4 by 2 which is 6 fine that is also true but there is a trouble these are the set of natural numbers I do not know maybe it is true for first 10 natural numbers and then it does not hold good so till what point do I go I, I, I cannot keep on doing it for infinity right because that is not feasible absolutely not feasible still I want to verify this correct I want to verify whether whether this this relation holds good whether this this identity holds good correct now what do we do what do I do this is where mathematical induction comes in. What do I have to do? I have to test it through particular cases and then I have to generalize it. Right? So what do I have to do here? I have to start from the particular cases, particular cases and then I have to generalize it. Right? Generalize it that's what it does correct but then how do I achieve it obviously this is not a way I cannot start doing it for all the natural numbers so what do I do what do I do I'll have to 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 do something else and the motivation comes from the dominoes effect that we discussed right so if I want all of these to fall what had we said earlier the first thing that I should ensure is that the first one falls. Correct? The first one falls. The second thing is that whenever whenever n falls, nth falls, n plus 1th does fall. n plus 1th always falls. Right? And, and, and we'll use this. Okay. So what do we do? What do we do? 
we prove it for n is equal to 1. So what do we do? The first step in, in principle of mathematical induction, which we call PMI for short. Okay, so what we do is we prove, we prove. See, there, there is also a particular, particular logical way of saying this. We, we say that this whole thing is a statement, okay? This is, this whole thing, the, both together with the LHS and the RHS, it is a statement, okay? And what is that statement? We, we give it a name and that statement involves a variable n. So we say that it is a statement pn, a statement a statement pn which has an lhs and a rhs okay and what do we do we prove that p1 is true correct we prove that p1 is true okay so what do we mean by that what do we mean by that? By saying that P1 is true, we mean to, let, let me bring it, yeah. We, we put N is equal to 1 on the LHS and N is equal to 1 on the RHS. So, 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 so what happens? We say that P1, which is P1, 1 is equal to 1 into 1 plus 1 upon 2. Okay? It implies that 1 is equal to 1 into 2 by 2. It implies that it, it implies that 1 is equal to 1 which is true. Correct? Which is true. Hence, we say that hence P1 is true. Correct? P1 is true. Okay. Correct. So what have we done in effect? We have simulated this. We have allowed the first brick to fall. Okay. Okay. It, it, it may sound weird. Where is a brick falling here? But no, we have initiated the logic and the logic for n is equal to 1 is true. Correct. Now we'll again do this this we'll try to simulate this in mathematics and how do i do that whenever nth falls n plus 1 nth always falls if you replace false by true then you'll not have that much difficulty in 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 doing what i'm trying 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 to imply Fine, nothing is falling here, but what if instead of false, fall, falling, I say it's true. So first one is true. Then what do I do? If the nth one or, or, or since this involves n and, 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 and n is the last number, I use some general, general variable, say k, right? So if kth1, kth falls, that means when kth is true, then k plus 1th is true. Where k can be anything, right? So I say that, that you pick up any. If this falls, you have to ensure that this falls. Correct? So, so what does it become the domino after I... I kind of replace the word falling by true, it becomes first one is true, which I have done here. Exactly that. The second thing is whenever the kth one is true, the k plus one th is true. Correct? Whenever kth is true, the k plus one th is true. So what do I do? And I'll do exactly that. So so what I'll do here is I'll assume. I'll assume 
that the kth is true. So this is the first thing that I did. Now what do I do? Let us assume that. Let's assume that that P K is true. So what are you trying to say? That the statement is true for N is equal to K. For any K. What am I trying to simulate? Okay. What am I trying to simulate? That if the Kth brick falls, if the Kth, if it is true for K, it should be true for K plus 1. Correct? And I'll do exactly that. Right? So let us assume that pk is true, let us assume that pk is true, then, okay, okay, pk is true, then we should be able to prove that, we should be able to prove that, to prove that, we should be able to prove that p k plus 1 is true. Okay? Correct? So, so this is our assumption. This is our assumption that pk is true. Okay? And we should be able to prove that if, if, if that assumption is true then this should be true. Now I'll tell you a funny thing about about my own 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 thing uh, about my own experience and how I underwent this. I used to always protest. Why should you assume something to be true when you have still not proved it to be true? Understand? My contention was: How can you take it true? How can you say that this is true? When this is what you have to prove, you are so saying that so 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 we assume pk and and pk is a whole statement, right? One plus two, whose whose LHS is is kind of this, but but instead of n. When there was an n here, it used to end at n. When there is a k here, it ends at k. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 till k is equal to k into k plus 1 upon 2. Correct? I have assumed it to be true. I, I'll, I'll soon, soon tell you why I was wrong in saying how can you assume it and, and, and why this logic is absolutely absolutely correct okay so so we assume that this is true if we assume that this is true that means we assume that if k th falls what should i do k plus 1 th should fall that means p if this is true i should be able to prove that pk plus 1 is true okay so we assume this to be true we should be able to prove that we should be able to prove that we should be able to prove that that p k 1 the statement p k 1 okay the statement p k 1 which is given by 1 plus 2 plus 3 it will it will go and end till where will it end in k plus 1 but then prior to k plus 1 there will be there will be k. So you should write one term prior to it as well. So we should be able to prove that this is equal to what? You, you replace k by k plus 1. So k 
k plus 1 into into i'll have to put a k plus 1 in place of k there, there, there was a k here right there was a, a k here instead of this k i have written k plus 1 do we get that okay so so k plus 1 plus 1 upon 2 get that this is what we have to prove and this is what we have assumed correct do we understand that now since I have assumed this to be correct I get a foothold here okay I get a foothold because if this is correct then I can proceed further now you should always try to look for this say this is what I have taken the LHS is equal to this this is what I have taken to be true so I can use it here right I, I can use it further if this is true maybe you add something to, to the LHS of both the, both the sides then it will be true that that will also be true or you subtract something or you multiply something it will be true right now while solving these problems, you should always look at what you have to prove. I have to prove that this whole thing is equal to that. Now, in this, within this, try to see if you have a part of the truth. A part of what you already had assumed to be true. Just try to see that. Now, now this part, this part of, of, of the LHS that, that you have assumed to be true is there. Is it not? It is there. Correct? So how do I bring it? So I start from this. Okay. I have seen both of them. I have seen something that, that, that part of it is there. So what do I do? I start from this true value. So we have, we have p k 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to k is equal to k into k plus 1 by 2. Correct? I have that. How do I move from here to here? If I add k plus 1 to both sides of 1, okay? If I add, add k plus 1 to both sides of 1, then at least the LHS of what I had to prove is, is, is what I get, correct? I get the LHS. From here, I have to come here and this is true. So I added K plus 1 to both sides of it, correct? So so what do I get? Not, not, not to 1. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is wrong. This is what you have. Yeah, yeah. Because this is after all that, no? So, so, so this is right. This is right. One, okay? Or, or this is what is this? Both are identical. So, what happens? I get one plus two plus three plus k plus k plus one. Correct? And this is, you have to parallelly keep in mind that this is somehow the LHS of this. Correct? Plus k plus 1 is equal to, is equal to, I am using this. So, k into k plus 1 upon 2 plus k plus 1. Okay, same k plus 1 added to 
both the sides this k plus 1 here and this k plus 1 here correct now what happens so i have got my lhs no need writing the whole thing time and again so i now shift my attention to the rhs correct what happens i take out k plus 1 that is common in both by the distributive property i have a k upon 2 left here and a 1 left here is it not this whole thing went away this was 1 into k plus 1 so so this becomes k plus 1 into k plus 2 upon 2 is it not i took the lcm i took the lcm as 2 and or maybe i i multiplied both the, both of them by 2 okay and made the denominator the same so what happens i get this which is nothing but this and which is what is p k plus 1 correct is k plus 1 this is i should have kind of simplified and written it which is equal to which is which is equal to i should have written it as as k plus 1 into k plus 2 k plus 2 upon 2 is that the same is this the same as that yes so what has happened i have started from pk and i have i have started from pk and i have proved that pk plus 1 is true right i have started from here and have said Whenever this is true, this is true. Correct? This is what I have proved. Now see how it works. I have set an iteration. Okay? I have actually set an iteration. What has happened? See? I said, whenever it is true for k, it is true for k plus 1. Correct? And I have proved it to be true for, for k is equal to 1. I have said if it is true. Now you understand my contention. My contention was how can you say something is true when it is not true. I am saying if it is true. If. That means if the k is false. Can you ensure that the k plus 1 is false? This is what I have done. So, I say if it is true for k, it is true for k plus 1 and I have initiated the whole trigger. You see, what have I done? I have proved that it is true for k is equal to 1. So, automatically it becomes true for, for k is equal to 2. You see that? It became true for 2. Now it is true for 2. It is true for 2, so it will become true for 3. What has happened? The dominoes have started falling. You have kicked the first. Right? And since it is true for 3, it will have to be true for 4. If it is true for 4, it has to be true for 5. True for 5, true for 6. True for 6, true for 7. And, and it will continue. And will go to n. Do you understand that? So, uh, this is this in, in, the, in the parallels of computer is called an iteration. Okay? What do you do? You, you set up a chain. I have set up actually a chain. If this happens, this will happen and I ensure the first to happen. Okay? Do we understand that? I have said that if it is true for, if it is true, fine. When it is true here, then it is true here, then it is true here, and I have actually proved it to be true for k plus 1. So now it's good to go. Right? We can now start this iteration. Fine, that for k is equal to 1, it is true. 
then we ourselves have said that if it is true for some k, it will be true for the next k, k plus 1, the consecutive one, the next consecutive, correct? And I have said that it is true for k is equal to 1. So automatically it becomes true for k is equal to 2. And since it is true for k is equal to 2, 2 comes here, this makes it 3, 3 comes here, makes it 4, 4 comes here, makes it 5, and keeps on going on till infinity. So something that was seemingly impossible because I had tested it for infinite number of numbers that has been reduced to a simple thing by setting up this chain, iteration, a chain reaction, correct? And this is, is so, so, and, and, and this is technical, so you, you write, you write a, a sentence here that completes it and, and many times if you do not write that sentence they, they 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 cut a mark or so okay so hence from this is the statement hence from the you can write the whole thing or you can write from the principle of mathematical induction the statement we had started with the statement pn which had an lhs and an rhs right the state pn is true for all natural numbers all natural numbers n correct we get the point so in a nutshell, what am I doing for any given statement? We prove statement PN, prove that P1 is true and Second, if P K is true, P K plus one is always true, and that is what does the trick. Correct? Right? 